Hi, this is Matt Baker. For many of you watching, there is probably a conifer tree in your house right now, or at least an artificial tree that is made to look like a conifer. I therefore thought it would be a good time to once again use my classification of plants and fungi chart, this time focusing on this green section over here, which includes conifers and other non-flowering plants. Not only will this help you determine what type of Christmas tree you have, it will also help you to learn to recognize different types of conifers in general. So when it comes to land plants, the vast majority fall under the category of vascular plants, which means plants with things like roots, branches, and leaves. In turn, the vast majority of vascular plants fall under the category of seed-bearing plants, the main exception to this being ferns, which grow spores instead of seeds. From here, things go in two very different directions. Angiosperms grow seeds in containers, called fruit, and produce flowers prior to growing these fruits. In contrast, gymnosperms do not grow seeds in containers, and are hands considered to be naked seeds. So, no flowers and no fruit. Although, as we'll see, sometimes their seeds do kind of look like fruits. Now, most gymnosperms are conifers, meaning that they grow cones. But there are actually a few other kinds, such as cycads, which grow mainly in the tropics, and the famous ginkgo tree, which produces these unique fan-shaped leaves, which fall off in the winter. But we're going to focus on the conifers, because that's where we'll find Christmas trees and other evergreen trees we tend to associate with winter. So within the conifer division, we get the Panopsida class, which then divides into three orders. The two main ones are Cuprisales, which means cypress-like, and Pinales, which means pine-like. The third one, Arocariales, is where we find the very strange-looking monkey puzzle tree. Supposedly, it got its name because someone said upon seeing it, well, that would certainly puzzle a monkey. I've seen them used as outdoor Christmas trees, but I wouldn't recommend taking one inside your house as... They're kind of dangerous due to their very spiky leaves. Most Christmas trees belong to Penales, which houses the pine family, which of course includes pines, but also spruces, firs, and a few other genera. It's actually fairly easy to tell the difference between a pine, a spruce, and a fir once you know what to look for. Pines tend to have long needles that are bunched together in groups of two or more. Take, for example, the scotch pine one of the most common pines used for Christmas trees. If you look closely, you'll notice that the needles come in pairs, with each pair held together in a little sheath. In contrast, spruces and firs tend to produce shorter, single needles. The difference here is that spruce needles tend to be square with sharp tips, whereas fir needles tend to be flat with soft tips. So if you're not sure if it's a spruce or a fir, just touch the needles. If they're sharp and you can roll one in between your fingers, it's probably a spruce. Otherwise, it's a fir. About 400 years ago, which is when the tradition of putting a tree inside your house for Christmas first started in Germany, the main tree used was the Norway spruce. However, these days it is the softer fir trees that are more popular, with the Fraser fir probably being the most popular of all, at least in North America. Although, on the West Coast, the Douglas fir is also common. And this is where things get a bit confusing, because the Douglas fir isn't actually a real fir. As you can see on the chart, it is actually placed in its very own category. Now, I haven't really talked about cones up to this point, because when it comes to Christmas trees, most sellers remove them. So you can't really use cones for identification purposes. However, when it comes to the Douglas fir, taking a look at the cones is by far the easiest way to tell it apart from true firs. You see, Douglas fir cones have a unique feature. They have little extra bits hanging down that kind of look like a mouse's tail with two little feet on either side. So if you see those, you've definitely got yourself a Douglas fir. True firs, on the other hand, are unique in that they grow up, unlike most conifer cones, which grow down. Now, also belonging to the pine family are hemlocks, but they don't tend to be used as Christmas trees. 
They look a lot like firs, except that if you look closely at where the needle attaches to the branch, you'll notice that they have little stems. So just remember the phrase, hems have stems. True cedars also belong to the pine family, although they are quite rare in North America, as well as larches, which are unique in that they are not evergreen. They actually change color in the fall and then lose their needles, like most broadleaf trees. Okay, let's now move over to Cupressales, where we first of all find yew trees in their very own family. If you ever see a conifer growing little red berries, that's a yew, although technically they aren't real berries and you definitely shouldn't eat them because they're poisonous. The rest of the trees in this order are in the cypress family, which of course includes cypresses. Cypresses have flat scaly leaves instead of needles. They don't tend to be used as Christmas trees, but the branches are often used as decorative garlands. Now, here on the west coast of North America, which is where I live, we have a tree that looks a lot like a cypress that we call a red cedar. But again, this is confusing because red cedars are not true cedars. As I already pointed out, true cedars belong to the pine family. Now, the best way to tell the difference between a western red cedar and a cypress is by looking at the underside of the leaves. Cedars have little white shapes that kind of look like butterflies, whereas cypresses have thin lines that look like X's or Y's. Another famous West Coast tree is the coastal redwood, currently the tallest growing tree on our planet. It belongs to the sequoia genus. In 2006, a tree was discovered growing in Northern California that measured 379 feet tall. Named Hyperion, it is currently the tallest individual tree on Earth. Finally, we have the juniper, whose main distinguishing feature is its little blue berries. But again, these aren't really berries, technically speaking. In this case though, if they're from a common juniper, you can eat them in small quantities. Usually they're dried, crushed, and used for flavoring things like gin. Now, before we go, let me point out three non-conifer plants that are also associated with Christmas. First of all, there's mistletoe in the sandalwood family, which is unusual in that it's actually a parasitic plant that grows on trees. You see, mistletoe is evergreen. So in winter, when the host tree loses its leaves, the mistletoe suddenly becomes visible. Then of course, there's holly, known for its spiky evergreen leaves and red berries. It's found in the astrid section, whereas the final plant I want to point out, the red-leaved poinsettia plant, is found in the rosid section. Okay, that was a look at some of the main plants associated with Christmas. If you happen to have a real Christmas tree in your house right now, see if you can figure out what type it is, and let me know your answer in the comments. Thanks for watching.